You ready to do the video with me today, buddy? Yeah? Welcome back, everybody. Today, Remy and I are putting on a video for y'all. It's going to be a little different than what I normally do. Um, I wanted to go outside and film, but it's been raining here for days. But as the title of the video says, Special Cruisers. You went down, buddy? All right. We're going to talk about stereotypical cruiser acts and what everybody thinks of when that's mentioned. Let's get into it. I thought I would start off today by showing y'all uh, three of my cruisers. This was my grandfather's Holtzbrook double bit cruiser. It was the first axe that I was ever given. Very nice, still in great condition cruiser. It is what got me into axe collecting in the first place. Secondly, this is the very first axe that I ever purchased. And it is a True Temper Flint Edge Best Axe Made. I found this at a flea market for, it was $25. I got very lucky on this one. Then, because those other two are so special to me, and I don't use them all the time, I put together this Collins double bit cruiser, and it is on an Adirondack handle. And I'll go into more about the Adirondack handle here shortly. Um, this is actually one of my favorite designs, favorite patterns. It's light, nimble, and easy to use. I take it camping quite frequently, and it works well for that suited position. Um, the Adirondack handle, let me back up just a bit. Um, from the research I've done and talking with historians and axe collectors, um, a lot of times you will find that a, a lot of double bits will have a sharp, keen edge and a stunted, more blunt edge. And the blunt edge is for uh, working around roots, knots, splitting, things of that nature. And the keen edge is mainly for your chopping and limbing and that sort of thing that normally from what i understand that came about as a logger or whoever was using the axe would be using it if they damaged the bit they then sharpened that bit at a more blunt edge that became standard practice later on that they would go ahead and sharpen a blunt edge and then a fine edge and the adirondack one of my favorite handles even on a double bit I have a Pulaski on an Adirondack, and it's just fantastic around the property. It was so that you could easily switch. Let's see, you could just easily switch between edges just by the feel of the handle. You didn't have to look and see, okay, yeah, this is my blunt edge. You just flip the handle over and you knew by the feel of it which edge you were using in that moment. I am going to reference my notes because I don't want to get anything incorrect. So from my research and speaking with axe historians and collectors and looking online, the term timber cruiser didn't come around until 1872. That was the first reference that they can date back to. It wasn't until 1880s that the term became popular and was used by media and authors. Advertisements for the Timber Cruiser came later around 1903. And it wasn't until axe manufacturers like Kelly Axe and Tool, Warren Axe and Tool Company, Main Edge and Tool, and others would realize the need to start manufacturing and advertising for this, and that didn't happen until the 1930s. When that happened, when those manufacturers started producing and manufacturing cruisers, they standardized it. Before, it had been anywhere from two, two and a half pounds, somewhere in that range. People were just hiring blacksmiths and getting heads forged for their needs. But when the major brands started manufacturing, they standardized it. And it is typically a two and a half pound on a 28 inch handle. 
Warren did produce a two pound head for a very short lived time. I love these things. It's so handy. Six months ago, my neighbor reached out to me. He said, hey, I know that you collect axes and I know that you refurbish them. He said, my best friend works for the BLM. No, not that one. He works for the Bureau of Land Management and his job is to make maps, go out and blaze trails. He is a modern day trailblazer. He asked if I had something or if I could get my hands on something that he thought his friend would really like and appreciate. So I did some research, talked with some historians and collectors, and came up with something that I thought that he's absolutely going to love. And that's what I'm going to start on today. While timber cruisers and trailblazers probably used a lot of different manufacturers' axes in the day, speaking with the historians and collectors, probably a good representation would be the Kelly Wood Slasher. It has phenomenal steel and it was priced reasonably so the everyday working man would be able to purchase it and use it. The edge, because of the steel, the edge would last a long time and it's a perfect candidate for this project. It's gonna be put on a 28 inch handle I'm not going to go through everything that I normally do because y'all have seen me do that before, but I will show the process and show the end result.
So when I was hanging the head, the handle cracked on me, so I had to do a repair on it, put a couple of dowels in there. I didn't record that, but that's because uh, the brush axe that was sent to me by uh, DJ's Tool Restoration, that handle is jacked up, and I'm going to be doing a big video on repairing a handle. I don't know if that handle can be saved, but I'm going to give it a shot. That's going to come a little later. But I think this turned out really good. Like I said, he works for the Bureau of Land Management. My buddy wanted me to laser engrave their emblem on here. So I did. I think it looks beautiful. I absolutely love it. Went to a 400 grit, just a usable, a usable uh, edge on it. I didn't go mirror polished. No need for it. Um, let's see, is it sharp? I'm going to cut myself. Yeah, I think it's sharp. Let's see. Yeah, no way. Y'all, I appreciate y'all tuning in and watching the video. This was a very special project. Like I said, my neighbor contacted me and wanted me to make uh, acts for his buddy that works for the Bureau of Land Management. And I think he's absolutely going to love this. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Don't forget, when I reach 1,000 subscribers, I'm going to be giving away an axe almost exactly like this. So, thanks for tuning in. And until next time, get out there, save something from being forgotten, and live a big life.